Hi, everybody. Welcome to Act Now. I'm Juliana Forlano. As per usual, I hope you're doing well. And if not, I hope you're doing okay. And if you're not okay, I hope it's just neutral, but nothing below there. I wish you all the best in these very challenging times as we navigate uh, the destruction of our democracy and the removal of women's bodily autonomy. What is so scary about women making choices? What is the intersection between capitalism? patriarchy and the suppression of women's choices both now and throughout history. These are the questions that I asked my friend and fellow traveler, Dr. Harriet Fraud. She's the host of Capitalism Hits Home on the Democracy at Work Network. And she's also the co-host of this awesome podcast called It's Not Just in Your Head. It's basically two mental health professionals where Harriet is one of them. And they explore how capitalist economic systems impact people's emotional lives. Any conversation I have with her is um, far reaching, wide, broad. It's just the kind of wonderful conversation that you wish you could be the fly on the wall of what she says, you know, about any any topic that's happening. And I was able to get her to have a nice long chat with me for the benefit of you about what is happening with the rollback of Roe versus Wade that we are just about to see right here in the United States. So with all of that introduction, sit back, relax, enjoy this very enlightening conversation. And don't forget to put in the comments your questions, your thoughts. I'd love to hear back from you. Thanks so much. Here's my talk with Dr. Harriet Fraud. <laughs> Harriet, thank you so much for coming and talking with me about these things. I am delighted to do so. Well, uh, you know, let's first talk about the leaked memo. Um, it's not like we didn't see this coming, but as a longtime feminist um, person pushing for justice in this sphere, what were your what was your personal response to to that memo in that moment? It was this is the next step in the misogynistic assault on women. And it brings me back to the times of Carasso, which was the original um, abortion rights mm. movement, which was against abortion rights and forced sterilizations because they used to forcibly sterilize poor white and black women at the same time as they gave an abortion sort of like what they did and were caught doing at some of the ICE detention centers, what they were caught doing mm -hmm. to immigrants until a courageous whistleblower reported them and got fired and blacklisted in her whole area. Uh, at any rate, I think it was another assault. And I am heartened to see that the nation is mobilizing I'm grateful to whoever leaked it. And I think that we have to mobilize. And if this is, you know, and this is a very worthy cause for mobilization because it is part of the legal framework for fascism where you enforce control over women's bodies by the males in the society and by actually a fascistic government because part of the Nazi agenda was to divide the working class that was threatening to unite against capitalism and before fascism was instituted. And it began with a sort of lattice work of um, legal moves. Mm. And one of the legal moves has been, of course, to cast doubt on the whole electoral process, threaten it. Another one has been to curtail voting by um, changing poll locations and maps. And this is yet another one to divide women from men by making us the inferior servants of men and starting a whole lattice of 
suppressions so that the white male, the wealthy white male is at the top, then the less wealthy white male than women who are supposed to serve as uh, men's prostitutes and child rearers and cleaners and social connectors and emotional connectors, that's the next. And um, also to, even though there's price gouging everywhere, not to put price controls and price ceilings and punishments for raising prices, which is why we have inflation. They want to make up for the profits they lost, not for any other reason of supply chains or anything else. But what there's a whole lattice work that they're trying to enforce with right wing judges. And what happened in the Supreme Court is a prime example where the three fundamentalist Catholic and fundamentalist Protestant judges are deciding to take away our right to choose what happens in our bodies. Harriet, there was a lot of shock. And I think the memo and the release of the memo served a good purpose. People who were following this issue knew it was going to be coming up in the Supreme Court. The media cycle was going to start talking about it. If it went that way, there would be this slow drip of, oh my goodness, are we going to lose Roe? But with this release of the document, there has been this shock to the nation. And um, I'm glad that you find it that, um, I'm glad that you're finding it kind of uh, hopeful of how people are responding. I find it, I mean, my concern is that it's, it's too late. They, you know, the, the 70% of the voting populace wants abortion to be legal, and yet they're still doing this. And then if the Republicans get the House and the Senate electorally, they could stop the other way we could keep abortions safe and legal. They could say, now it's illegal, you know, I don't care, uh, across the land, red state, blue state, it's illegal no matter what. I don't understand. It, you know, to me, it just seems like we're beyond what street protest can actually do. I don't know about that. And I think what they'll do is they'll make it state by state so that the reactionary states will not allow abortion under any circumstances. And those states that do will allow extra abortions. However, poor women won't have transportation and will be stuck. It's basically, it's a forced birth movement, not a pro-life, but forced birth. And I think part of it is what is happening now is that the four biggest employers, Walmart, Amazon, call centers, and fast food, all clock their workers every second move. For example, you have two minutes and 23 seconds to assemble a sandwich. And if you don't assemble it, that quickly at McDonald's, a Big Mac or cheeseburger or whatever you get, it starts beeping and nudging you and it's noted. And the same thing with Amazon, you're given a certain amount of time and to pick a package and put it on a conveyor belt. And if you sit for five minutes, the thing goes wild. Mm. Um, and the same thing at call centers where every call is monitored and the same at Walmart, where every move is monitored, and you're paid so badly that they have a food stamps desk at Walmart so that we can pay our taxes to, to compensate for their underpayment of workers so that they can get cheaper food sure. because the government pays for it. And they also have at Walmart super large parking lots for people who are living in their cars because they can't afford rent. So that we're talking about an immiseration, a pushing into financial misery of workers who are opting out. 20 million people have opted out of the labor force. And this is to get, it, in part, it gets forced birth to make poor people available so that they have to support children on terrible jobs or else they'll starve to death. And I think already one in four children goes hungry and they took away the um, pandemic child tax credit, but this will further push people into misery and force them to work at these abusive jobs. So that's part of it. The other part of it is to create 
recreate the hierarchy where women's bodies are owned by men. Mm. And so that I think a lot of the nation is mobilizing because it's such a shock. Chile just got abortion, full rights. Mexico got abortion, full rights. You know, that this is a bizarre backwardness and it's a tilt towards fascism with its hierarchies that keep people apart. Oh gosh, it, you know, uh, this the repression of choice for women specifically, it seems to me there's this deeper psychological desire to control women Absolutely. on a one-on-one, -on -one, uh, you know, in a one-on-one -on -one situation. But then there's also this intersection of the social aspect and capitalism. Let's start, um, this is where I really wanted to plumb your expertise here because I know you're both a psychotherapist and also, um, you know, a commenter on, on capitalism. Um, let's start with the, the deeper desire to control women. I always had this theory that, you know, kids want their moms to do what they want, to meet their needs in a certain way. And the mom is generally the woman, right? And so they just, just that desire to control that mom is so deeply ingrained in both male and female psyche that it just never goes away. It's just there. It is part of us. And also every child, male or female, has their most humiliating and helpless experiences at the hands of a woman because of the sexism and the bad pay of childcare. The people who take care of children at their most helpless and humiliating moments, males and also females, although females have the satisfaction, will grow up to be these powerful creatures too. But hmm. for men, those humiliations are at the hands of mothers, babysitters, child with care workers, nurses, they're all women. And there's a sense of rage at these omnipotent women and wish to control them. And so, you know, and men's anger has permission to be directed towards women because other men fight back on a level that, um, women are trained not to. Mm. And I remember hearing an interview with two writers it was on the radio. One of the writers was Margaret Atwood, a woman, and the other was a famous male writer. And they, the question was, what are women most afraid of from men? What are men most afraid of from women? And the male writer said, men are most afraid of ridicule and humiliation at the hands of a woman. And when they asked Margaret Atwood- No wonder women, marriages don't stay together. <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. I didn't what know. are women most afraid of from men? She said death, which is a real difference because that's one way of wielding power over women, which is why that's the third most prevalent cause of death of women between 15 and like 44 or 45. Mm -hmm death at the hands, murder really at the hands of boyfriends, husbands or exes. Oh. And um, so that I think part of it is that people are angry. They have been denied power, the power to make a living, the power to get ahead, which used to be afforded to families headed by a white male. It was never afforded to minorities or women at the heads of families, but that has been taken away. Mm. People can't get ahead and people are angry and they are denied. And this has become a focus of that denial as if we wielded the power, but it's a way of gaining power over someone. You can say, at least I'm not a woman, at least I'm not black and give people something in the way that fascists do. It's really hard as a non-fascist to get your head around fascism and the, the the underlying mental, I would say, disorder that um, <sighs> drives these people. I mean, there's this there's this desire to understand, but some of it is just completely irrational and outside of the realm of understanding. 
Well, I think for those fewer, luckily, women who are in the fascistic Trumpist movement, it's looking back to when women, white women, used, who used to be the majority in this country, were supported by the family wage given to mainly unionized but all male workers who were white, had a chance of promotion and could support dependent wives and children. Now women have to work outside the home and if they live in a home with men, often come home to do the second shift of childcare, sexual labor, emotional labor of soothing him, connecting him with friends and relatives, that kind of social labor and domestic labor, cleaning up and cooking. And so that creating order so that women look back to the good old days when they were supported by a male wage, even if they were subordinate. That's gone. So for the women who are longing for that, they knew their place at least and could survive. Mm. And for the men, they had a place of domination of somebody, they had a place of domination of their wives who were utterly financially dependent on them. And so if they beat them, the woman had the choice of leaving and being destitute. When the women's movement started in 1968, women got 59 cents on the male dollar. Wow, um, we've made it to 70. Yes. <laughs> and mothers, Progress. Mothers make it to 44 cents on the male dollar because Oof. if you have children, you usually have to be forced to work part time to compensate for all the childcare. So, um, you know, they want those good old days when they had control over somebody. Now they have no control over their jobs. Algorithms control their every move and they don't control their wives anymore. Mm -hmm. And they want to have control over somebody rather than have a society where we're all together without cruel control. And the socialist and left movements in the United States have not been as powerful as they should be because in the 50s, there was a very successful suppression of the left. Because mm. during World War II, Uncle Joe Sal <coughs> Stalin was our chief ally in Russia. Mm. And the Communist Party claimed membership. They never wanted to overthrow violence said, or never said they wanted to overthrow our government violently, unlike the January 6th people. But <laughs> we were considered violent to overthrow the government and treasonous. <coughs> the socialists were kicked out of the unions and everywhere else because they were fellow travelers and the left as well. So we had a real clean out. Yeah. Well, you know, just to um, bringing it back to this idea of squashing a woman's choice, it's interesting how the propagandists of today and over the years. I mean, this has been a long-term strategy that the mm -hmm. right has used to get people to vote against their best interests. For right. example, I think this idea that each zygote is a life and we can't right. kill it pulls on the, the heartstrings of certain type, certain aspects of society, certain like women, it pulls on this, heartstring in that area and then of course the propagandists don't cover the fact that say burning fossil fuels causes asthma in these other kids and is killing that and putting synthetic pesticides on our food and spraying chemicals kills the bees food supply is going to crash all of that you know this idea that that that's the only way to preserve and protect life what what do you make of how you know how well this propaganda movement has, how effective they've been at getting women to choose against having bodily autonomy on their own. Well, I think if you look at the people picketing at um, with Planned Parenthood, it gives an array of services, including <coughs> abortion. Mm -hmm. Most of them are men <coughs> who. Yeah. Go ahead, have some water. This is a hard topic to discuss. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also that 
in the studies done of the people who go to what is called pro, um, you know, pro-life and I call forced birth rallies, most of them were abused as children <coughs> and felt their parents wanted to kill them and are reacting against that. And then behind that is women should know their place as breeders. I this whole thing about outlawing abortion that we have right now, what they want to do is outlaw everything, all abortions, including things like the stopping of a pregnant, an ectopic pregnancy, which will kill a woman. Mm -hmm. It's it's just it, that argument that they're making about, and I don't necessarily want to get into their arguments, but there are that argument that they're making about um, we have to save a life. It's just unbelievable. This is, it's so fascistic to say, if you get pregnant, then you're risking your life. That's what you do. Even within the context of a marriage that religious people seem to think like, okay, well, you can have sex in a marriage and that's fine. But they're still willing to risk their wives' lives by saying, well, I'm, you know, more of an ideologue than I care about you as a human being. It's, That's right. It's but also, um, in Catholic hospitals, they always used to prioritize the life of the fetus over the mother. And I do think that this is <coughs> just wow. a way of controlling women. Yeah. Well, we're all frightened. I mean, what's yes. not frightening about, I, you know, I've seen a lot of stuff on the internet saying, oh, well, we should have forced vasectomy at, you know, or sterilization for men starting at 13 until they're ready to have a child and then we can reverse it. It's more reversible now, which I think is an interesting thing that, that proves a point. But the reality is, if you're not going to let a woman who has an ectopic pregnancy have a pregnancy that that will not lead to a child anyway because they kill the mom and then the child the you know they all die nobody lives through an ectopic pregnancy unless there is a termination is my understanding of you know that that's right because it is chronic isn't um, the issue wouldn't the issue be they're saying oh it's god's will right this is god's will that they're they're relying on some this is god's will that this happened so it's okay if you die then shouldn't those same people say oh i have cancer so i guess i won't get any treatment because exactly. it must be god's will i mean if they're going to be ideologically pure like that i think it's great because then soon they'll all be dead and their ideas will die out with them you know right. and what's the point of getting medical care in general exactly Stop it. <laughs> Stop medical care. <laughs> well, these people aren't aren't really known for their uh, ideological, uh, you know, consistency. No. I really think, as we've talked about before, that this is just um, just a stake in the ground for, in, you know, the uh, fascism and capitalism. So let's let's move from the personal why why everyone wants to control their mom. <laughs> to sort of the, I mean, we've touched on it already, but the societal aspects here, let's talk about the crossover of, and we can talk about America or wherever you want to go, because I know you have deep um, understanding and information about, about the history of all this. Um, this intersection of capitalism and, and really controlling women. Well, <clears throat> capitalism is falling apart in the United States in some, to some extent. China is growing much faster than we are. China and Russia had made an alliance. That's one of the reasons we want to weaken Russia. And they say so. Lloyd uh, Austin, head of defense in the United States, says that they're in the, pushing Ukraine to fight to the last Ukrainian. Not us. Uh, because they want to weaken Russia with a protracted struggle and thereby prevent the power of the alliance of the Chinese, the most populous country in the world, and the most tech advanced more than the United States, even though our top industries are tech, and they grow faster, and they are overtaking us. All our tech industries have gone down, our economy is going down, theirs is ascendant. Mm. They have they take draconian, harsh measures, but they have had 10,000, approximately 10,000 deaths. We've had a million. We're the worst in the world on that one, too. Do they have abortion there? 
Is abortion legal in China? Yes, it is. Right, because don't they had didn't they have a one child policy? So they I guess used to. they yeah. used to, and abortion is legal. At any rate, anyway. the United States is losing the competition, and European capitalism is also losing the competition, and they want to distract Russia and weaken Russia to weaken that alliance of rich raw materials in Russia and technology and masses in China against the United States. And when capital, think of capitalism as a barrel, a big wooden barrel. When it starts to fall apart, the bands of fascism, the iron bands of fascism hold it together. That's mm -hmm. what happened in Germany. There was an, a crazy inflation. And that, you know, people after they were paid took a wheel, wheelbarrow and rushed to the store to get things before the inflation wiped out what they could get. It was terrible. And Germany was doing very badly after World War I because the West, you know, exacted a lot of humiliating payments from them. And fascism came to hold capitalism together, to keep those capitalist companies protected. And Hitler would have just been a weird guy if <laughs> Big industrialists hadn't come to support him and fascism, as opposed to the very powerful socialist and communist movement that was developing. It was an anti-war movement that developed after World War I, where Germany lost terribly, and um, people like Rosa Luxemburg and Karl Liebknecht of the Communist Party were very, very powerful leaders so powerful that not only did they murder her, but they chopped her up in bits and threw her <laughs> now. Yeah, it's not enough to just murder. Right. You got to chop so them up just to show. People like Krupp, who the United States didn't bomb, needed peace there. They were afraid that a socialistic government would curtail their profits. Right. Isn't that, that's really the same it's so parallel to what's happening here. I mean, I would make the argument that we already kind of have a cert, like we are more fascist than democratic at this point, because if you have 70% of people who do not want a women's right to reproductive freedom, a women's right to bodily autonomy, a woman's right to life, uh, you know, in certain conditions, uh, that is fascism. You have 70% of That's the population right. who wants that and a government and all of these, you know, these corporations, as you mentioned earlier, who are going to benefit from curtailing that. That's fascism. Is it not? It is. And they also want to vote. That's fascistic. We're not in a fascism yet, but that's fascistic. And so, okay. you know, so is vote limitations. So is not trusting the public's education. Um, election results, and so on. That's Trump, who in Mark Esper's book, Esper's book, says that Trump wanted to shoot the Black Lives Matter protester. And when Esper said, "As the, you can't do that, you can't do that, he said, well, how about shooting them in the leg then? Oh, okay. He said that, really? I didn't, yes. I didn't read the book. That's oh in God. the book. It's a recently released book, but OK. Wow. Fascistic, but it's not fascism because a fascist government hasn't been established here. They're working on the legal framework now, but they haven't established a fascist government. We still can demonstrate. He doesn't have permission to shoot demonstrators. That's important. However, it oh, is permission. Fascism. Yeah. Once he has permission to shoot the demonstrators, then we're no, full on. We're really, then, we're, then it's fascism. Then the police come and not only kill black people, they kill anybody who protests. So I think there is a tendency to fascism, which very wealthy people are supporting. And this is an example of it. And the Democrats did not fight like the Republicans would have when those judges were put in. Oh, no. They just sit there and accept it. The only things they really fight are things like stabbing Bernie in the back when he was a possibility yeah so that they are colluding they're also a capitalist party we have two parties running 
Yeah, they have the same sort of economic values. It's just like, oh, well, we might have some different social values, but now we're seeing that they don't even really have that. I mean, what have they done that recently in in light of this revelation? The only thing, and Biden is jumping on it because it's the only thing he has, is they will they will not allow abortions to be canceled. And now he has an issue. He certainly doesn't have an issue of curbing inflation, which he could. It was Nixon who had a a price cap on profit and on wages. And if you went over that, you would be arrested. Mm. And he was not exactly a left winger. So of course it's possible. Just like it's possible to expand the Supreme Court and it would have been possible to really fight Trump's suggestions the way they fought Merrick Garland as a suggestion for a Supreme Court, but the the Democrats don't don't fight. We need a socialist presence like France, Germany, and all the others have. And this is a direct assault. What they want is to establish the kind of family which I call the fascist feudal family. It was the family of fascism, where they banned abortion first thing. Then they banned birth control. Women had to work because somebody had to be in those munitions factories while all the men were drafted. But they got about, at the most, two thirds of a male wage because their real mission is taking care of men and children. They still didn't have more children the way the fascists wanted them to because they were so exhausted having to do everything at home and full-time jobs, but they were paid less and they had to obey. That's what these people have in mind. That's what American fascists have in mind, that a woman works full-time, then comes home, is inferior, takes care of the men, takes care of the children, works throughout her pregnancy, whatever, gets no benefits, has no childcare, and is an imprisoned inferior population giving men a sense of control. And that is is the fascist model. And having a church like Mussolini really emphasized, the Catholic church was the national church in Italy. It's one of the reasons that abortion and divorce were passed immediately after the fall of Mussolini. But um, that the woman was to serve the man and religion was to help her know her place like it did in feudal times. Mm. Help the peasants and the serfs know their place. And so we are in a dangerous moment. And I think the leak has woken people up to what is happening, particularly women, but both men and women, because... (laughs) As people, you and I are both people who've been trying to wake everyone up for quite some time and not in that, you know, that we're not the woke kind. We're really, you know, trying to wake people up uh, as to what's going on economically. And it is kind of nice to see that people are becoming aware and in their shock, um, you know, I wonder what we're going to see next. Are we going to see people taking to the streets? And then when that happens, you've got whether it's going, whether the government is going to become more, uh, you know, cracked down, more fascistic. We wouldn't expect to see that under Joe Biden. But when Occupy Wall Street was happening and President Obama was the president, you didn't, I mean, they, we were there in the park for a while, but you didn't, you know, you, there was still a big crackdown and those crackdowns were blamed on the LAPD, the NYPD. They weren't. And then you found out that there were these conversation calls between the mayors and, you know, people to say on this day, we're done. And yeah. Obama, that came from Obama. Yeah. of that Because that wasn't race and gender. That was class. Right. And one of the things that both, Republicans and Democrats share is needing to keep the class structure intact and their corporate donors happy. And socialists like the Occupy movement, the streets belong to the people, have a different idea Mm -hmm. that we should democratically decide what happens to us in our lives and that no one should have wage power over hundreds of thousands like Jeff Bezos does or Elon Musk, that 
we need a voice, we need economic democracy as well as political democracy, and they go together. That voice is starting to speak up, and the United States has a labor upsurge like we haven't seen for 100 years. You know, Starbucks yeah. is, has started with one successful union organizing drive, now has 220 drives going yes. on, and yes. many wins. Amazon lost one warehouse of a thousand people and the Amazon labor union won the other warehouse of 8,000 people, even though Jeff Bezos with his untold millions and billions is trying to contest that. Mm. And Grinnell College is completely organized. Chicago Art Institute is organized. All the newspapers and tech workers in New York except the Post, I think, but the Daily News, the New York Times, which is not pro-union at all, they're <laughs> organized. People are realizing, wait a minute, if we're going to work, we're going to be exploited unless we organize. And 20 million Americans have dropped out of work altogether, which is a kind of a passive resistance to the conditions of work in the United States. Yeah. And so we do have a lot of movement. What we don't have is an organized socialist movement, which is like the handle of an umbrella with the spokes that hold the fabric being climate activism, racial activism, Black Lives Matter, feminist activism, labor activism, all together to change a society in which the mass of people are empowered and have a chance. And that has to happen here. Do you it's, think that this particular issue, um, that the issue of a woman's right to choose, or excuse me, um, no forced birth, it's not about choice, it's about bodily autonomy. <laughs> um, do you think that this issue has, what ripple effects do you think this issue will have across the other areas of activism that you just named? I think it's an, an indication of what emergency situation we're in. And I think it's an occasion where I hope a socialist movement will emerge. I mean, other countries are ahead because they didn't succeed in suppressing communist socialists and leftists after World War II the way the US did, partly because the communist party led the resistance throughout mm -hmm. Europe and therefore they were heroes. And so even though the Marshall Plan wouldn't give you any money unless you suppressed communists at the university and in government, it didn't succeed in doing that in the labor unions, which is why German unions, for example, just to, well, I guess it was last year, won a 22 hour work week so they could have home life and work balance at the same salary with full benefits and membership on the governing boards and the uh, boards of directors of all the corporations. And have we seen as, uh, ger the German economy completely tank as is would be reported here in the U.S. as no, a reason that we can't do that? It's the strongest economy in Europe. Yeah. It's a strong economy. And so that, and of course, they give free medical care to everyone and education is free in Germany. There's no college debt because there's no fee. And also they uh, have free and subsidized child care, summer care, after school care and so on. And they still manage to have the strongest economy in Europe. But I think Americans are beginning to catch on. And I think this was a rude shock because the mass of people totally support the right to choose rather than forced birth. Yeah, I'm really glad it came with a leak again to re reiterate the comment I made at the beginning that, you know, if, if it had come as a um, court case, which we're looking at um, mm -hmm. coming up on the docket, people would start reporting about it. Then we would be concerned and then, mm -hmm. oh, we would be so disappointed. But the shock of this, I think, is really, um, really something useful these we uh, we we are we're not that good at moving against a slow moving coup but like That's a fast right. moving coup you're hey this is a real well, problem yeah. right i think people are seeing that our most basic freedom the freedom to control what goes on inside our own bodies is being stripped for women and we're 
a little more than half the population. So this is scary because, as you know, getting back to the other thing that we talked about, about um, uh, protest in the United States, if Donald Trump or some Trumpian, Ron DeSantis, I mean, there's many of them, yes. I mean, these people, mm -hmm. these disgusting people, um, if one of them gets into power, mm -hmm. um, if they gain two branches of the government, they already have the Supreme Court. Yeah. So that's, I guess, two. <laughs> if they get one of the other ones, that would be two, right? So if they right. get a, a, you know, one of the the Congress, uh, the House, the Senate, right. or, or the both. executive branch, right. they could really say, "Okay, that's it for protest. We're cracking down." Exactly. They could do what Trump suggested, but as Esper said, no, you can't get away with that. I mean, Just in my mind, we've got like a potential Tahrir Square, right? Like it could go one way yes. or it could go the other. Exactly. We do. We do because look, once American corporations abandoned the United States to make more money by outsourcing people's jobs and then brought that money home to buy our elections, a lot of people just gave up and became apolitical because they felt hopeless. And now they're seeing, oh my God, we were apolitical, now what's happening? And are beginning to mobilize. And I think one of the problems is that Biden is weak. He's very passionate about our geopolitical advantage. And they just elected $40 billion for the Ukraine, which was notoriously corrupt. And although it, not everyone in the Ukraine is a Nazi, they do have a large Nazi contingent. And they also have 1,500 miles of border with Russia. And when Cuba wanted a missile base from Russia a long time ago from the Soviet Union, and it was 90 miles an hour, JFK risked World War III to get them to back down and Khrushchev back down because they were 90 miles away. It was a threat. Well, NATO has ringed Russia with hostile NATO countries. And this is the last one, the Ukraine, which has 1,500 miles of shared border with Russia. And I think they provoked this in order to weaken Russia. They've said pretty much that, that they want a geopolitical advantage here. And they're just, and they got Zelensky, who they put in, they replaced the uh, pro-Russian leader with a lot of CIA money. There's even a memo that Hillary Clinton wrote with one of her aides, let's put in the clown, that's the comedian, Zelensky, okay? And they did, and he's loyal to the United States even though his country will be rubble. Mm. But, you know, yeah. Americans don't get excited about it even though it's money we need for medical care and child care and all the other things we need. But this is yeah, true. Yeah, imagine. Yeah, we want what we want to do here is uh, cu curtail a woman's right to choose uh, using the uh, excuse of we have to save the children and then we're going to send all this money off to another war, you know, <laughs> and not use it here on the home front and cry no, poverty no. when it comes to the home. If they could just pull 33 or whatever it was billion out of the sky to send somewhere, can't they just pull it here? To of course they the could. Children? Yes. Of course they could. And of course, pregnancy is much more dangerous than abortion. Here's a question for you. Actually, I'd like to go into that, but do they have abortion? Is it legal in Russia? Is it legal in the Ukraine? It's rush. It's illegal in Russia. I don't know if it's legal in the Ukraine. It's legal almost over the entire world. It's even now legal in Argentina, a totally Catholic country. And yeah. it's legal there because labor joined with the indigenous people of color, joined with the women's movement, joined with the socialists, and they won. Ugh. And they won in Chile. There's a socialist leader now, Boric. That's the same kind of coalition. That's why I know we need that coalition. And also the, cli the climate activists were in on both of those things because they saw we have common cause. And that's very important. But I think the United States is changing. And I think one of the troubles is Biden promised a lot and delivered very little. And the Republicans do this political theater of wild accusations and this and that. Biden is very quietly polite while he's being robbed, and so are we. Mm -hmm. So he's not popular. 
But this abortion thing is the one issue he has. <sighs> well, we'll see what he does. Uh, yes, I don't know. I don't, you know, we'll see, <laughs> I guess. We'll see what he does and if he's pushable by, by street uh, mm. protest. What are we going to look for as fascism continues? The removal of the of uh, a woman's bodily autonomy. You mentioned um, what was the other thing you mentioned? I'm sorry, I was spacing on it. Forced birth and yeah. election districts that are so election. gerrymandered that people right. that people of color and people who might be suspected of voting their class interest because they're being cheated on the job, they will be marginalized and they will not get in anywhere. Mm. So that we can look forward to. We can look forward to the end of the few benefits that America has compared to other countries that are, we're the richest country in the world still, but they all, all the other wealthy countries have free childcare, after school care, summer care, paternity leave, maternity leave, strong unions, and so on. In Germany, ironically, one of the things that happened because with the Marshall Plan, they didn't allow communists in the government if they were going to get the money or at the university. They all went into the union movement. So they have a powerful union movement. Have you have you noticed in your practice, I know this just happened last week, but have you noticed, um, you know, has this caused increased anxiety? In yes. People? Have... people are upset. They're angry. There's a demonstration on Saturday in Brooklyn. A lot of people who haven't gone on demonstrations in years are going. And it's not only women, because people see this as an assault on all of us. Mm. And women are the battering ram here, but then they're going to stomp on all of us. And they're scared. I mean, this is frightening because the Supreme Court is not beholden to you know, public. There's no regulations. There's no ethical standards, which is how Ginny Thomas can make a lot of money. Yeah. You push the January 6th and be on the Library of Congress board. <laughs> and she's, you know, a criminal and hasn't been brought up for her January 6th activities. And where, uh, you know, you have religious zealots in the Supreme Court who are unaccountable. They are ethically unaccountable. I mean, the fact that we haven't brought any accountability to any of these criminal criminals, I mean, starting with George W. Bush, the war criminal, and now, uh, you know, the next Republican president was a criminal in so many ways. What's the next one going to be? Because it always goes back. You know, the next one is going to what? Whole one pot? is usually worse than the other. However, oh. I don't know what's going to happen in the United States. It's like the stock market, which is falling down, 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 because... We can't compete with the Chinese and fight wars. We're in 130 countries around the world, not in overt wars, but covert military support for usually the right wing that will give favorable access to American corporations. And what has happened is with this boycott of Russia, one of the reasons South America won't join any of the anti uh Russian things is they're getting all the business. The businesses that used to order from Russia are now ordering from big countries like Brazil, which is why Bolsonaro, even though he's a fascist, will not go in on the Ukraine thing, and neither will any of the other South American countries because yeah. they're getting good business. It's crazy. It's so easy. This curtailment of a woman's bodily autonomy is really an economic issue. Just it what is. it comes down to is it's a bludgeon to repress women, but also to keep the so society in such a state that corporate power maintains its dominance and control. Exactly, so that people have to work to support their desperately poor families. It's also and at, then that explains why our government doesn't want to again foot that thirty-three billion that they could have just easily footed over to the arms industry, to feeding the poor, to supporting people while they're working because that would lead to out of desperation, exactly, or to free college or medical care, and it it's part of a whole fascistic plan to repress the mass of the people. However. As always with capitalist society, it only applies to people without money. 
if you have the money, you can always get an abortion. Right. Your private obstetrician can tell you about a provider in Puerto Rico where you can afford the visit and or in Sweden or in Canada, Canada, any number of all the countries around the world who all offer abortion, even Ireland, which was under the Catholic Church's thumb forever, now offers abortion rights so that wealthy women can always get an abortion. It's people who don't have the money to travel, maybe even to another state that allows abortions. You know, Freakonomics talked about children. The Freakonomics job. Sorry. No, that's okay. That's okay. Um, I I apologize. Um, Freakonomics, the podcast, talked not so many uh, years ago about how the crime rate has been going down, down, down since the legalization of abortion. And of course, it's easy to connect that to unloved children, unwanted children grow up to, you know, not have the support that they needed and, and and to have to, you know, they don't know. It's not like people who are abused always grow up to commit crime, but it, it, I think there's a connection there. Your thoughts? There was, there was a reduction in crime consistently from the 1973 Roe versus Wade until the pandemic. Now that people are jobless and denied and discriminated against and unable to have a life and driven mad from their isolation, crime is way up in spite of Eric Adams' swaggering boasts about stopping crime. It's gone up 42% in uh, New York. So, so much for that. But now with the pandemic, it's rising. But if they actually succeeded in stopping abortion rights, there would be a lot more crime because there would be a lot more people growing up unwanted, unprovided for, and enraged Mm -hmm. and acting out. Because it isn't wealthy people that go into street crime. They go into white collar crime. Right, right. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, they were talking only about street crime. That's an interesting right. uh, that's an interesting point. Harriet, uh, when did people who saw the writing on the wall in uh, other fascistic regimes, when did they pick up and move? I've noticed a lot of people talking about moving to Portugal these days. That's the big place where folks are pulling the ripcord and leaving. Um, when, mm-hmm. have you heard of this movement? And, and oh, when yes. do people- More people are emigrating than have ever before. Canada w- is thinking of stopping Americans from emigrating there because they have too many. Mm-hmm. I think it began with Trump, where people began to think, oh my God, this will be a fascist country. I'm getting out of here. Mm-hmm. But of course, it's people with means. It's not like... Of course, you can't pick up and go if you can't afford the fare and you don't have a car and you don't have a job and they won't let you in unless you're a skilled worker. And so you're stuck. And we're only talking about the rights of people with means in the United States. Already, poor people are desperate in debt and desperate. And their rents are going up. Even in New York, Adams has four people on for his housing um, representatives. Three out of the four rejected the idea of freezing rent because people can't possibly pay back their back rent and don't want to be evicted. And only one voted for that. So what are we talking how, about? How is it if they evict all these people, they're going to just find more people? Are people moving to New York right now? Like, where are they getting these people who can afford this stuff? It's Is short-term it- greed. I don't know. I don't know where they'll get them. I know that we have not reacted. We don't have the political movements that, let's say, Germany had. In Berlin, they have um, taken over 142,000 apartments from the biggest landlords to make them truly affordable. In Vienna, you can't, by law, charge more than 25% of anyone's income on rent. So, you know, but we are way behind. And so people are quite desperate and crime is going up now, but it went down for many, many years since 1973 and the abortion reform. But they don't look ahead. 
They don't look ahead and think about the consequences. Just like those capitalists who really supported, yeah, boycott Russian goods didn't think, oh no, we're already behind. Now we're gonna lose the markets to South America and elsewhere. Mm -hmm. China, you know, what are we doing? Not hurting them so much. These little, um, these little fascist groups, proud boys, this one, that one, whatever they are, it's doesn't it not does it not seem like they're all very soon going to join forces and be the brown shirts of the United yes. States? They I already mean, are. They're the people who shoot people at demonstrations. They're the Kyle Rittenhouse who shoots people and and gets a lot of support and his trials paid, uh, his legal expenses paid. They are the brown shirts. They're the people who drag you off and beat you if you're at a demonstration, even though you're at a legal demonstration. And they're and they're sanctioned by the state because we're not doing anything to stop them. Well, Biden has not been militant about sending federal patrols to these demonstrations and immediately arresting people as they drive into pe into a demonstration and run people over. You know. I, I fear we're going to be seeing a lot more of that because as the people uh, come into the streets uh, in order to demonstrate there will this, be this first of every fascistic thing that's happening and then the next one and the next one. Exactly. Uh, I, and I think, but I do know since I'm old and was active then that Nixon used to look out of the White House window in terror when he saw people demonstrating outside and there were millions of us and he got really scared. And I think as millions of Americans pour into the streets, the politicians who wanna look like they're on our side will support us. I could see that with Chuck Schumer at the Million Woman March against Trump that started way early in his tenure. Schumer was there cheering everyone on even though as far as poor women go, he hasn't done anything for them. And Hillary didn't either. She wanted a 12 and a half um, dollar an hour wage mm -hmm. as an, a rule. Bernie wanted 15, even though two thirds of the fast food workers are women. You know, she didn't care about poor women. It was corporate feminism. Mm -hmm. And we need real feminism. And we need the mass of people who are beginning to catch on. That's the good news. We are beginning to catch on. I noticed my um, my niece and some other people I know who are in college, um, I can't believe how young college folks are. <laughs> like, what happened to me? I'm old, I still no, relate to that. Yeah. <laughs> like, boy, you're young. Yeah. Um, you know, they, I, and me too, I've never lived in a world where there was no Roe v. Wade. That were the I, I just have never lived there, and this idea that you know justice is the arc of morality, the arc of justice is bending in the right direction. You you just hope you look back at what's been fought for. You you think oh the 80s. you think oh the eighties it's a blip, and right. you know e the younger people who are already aghast if they're aware they are. already aghast at what's going on. I feel that this has really shaken them to the core. And I, I think we're going to see across the United States, um, if they're allowed to go back onto their campuses, uh, some some real, hopefully some real student protest. What do you oh, think? Yes. What do you think? Middle school too. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know, people are inflamed over this. They've already had all sorts of spontaneous demonstrations and young males as well as females are enraged. There's much less of a gender divide in the younger generations. Oh. Thank goodness. Well, there's always much to talk about with you, Professor or uh, Dr. Frada. I really appreciate you coming on here. Would you have any suggestions for people who um, are really shaken by this announcement? Yes. Find out about local protests, Google it, protests against abortion restriction, and go out and be part of it. Be part of making those demonstrations happen. Don't sit there and let it let yourself be robbed. Get out there and do something about it. That's what changed abortion law before. Millions of us were out there. And that's what will stop this. 
and that's and also do whatever you can to create an alternative party that's how people win these things we join together all of us who are angry and robbed we join together and then we are the mass of people and the majority and we'll win thank you so much dr fraud don't forget to find Dr. Fraud's podcast, which I highly recommend. She has two of them. One is Capitalism Hits Home. That's on the Democracy at Work Network. And also check this out. It's not just in your head. It's a podcast where, where Dr. Fraud and another mental health professional explore how our capitalist economic system impacts our emotional lives. I really appreciate you coming on this program. And, and you know what? I have a new radio show at 2.30 on WBAI called no the Update. Yeah. Wait, what, what's Wednesdays, that one called? Wednesdays at 2.30, Interpersonal Update. Beautiful. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, I look forward to hearing that. And if you're not in New York, WBAI is 99.5 FM in New York, my old place of work. But it's also, you know, just ask your smart speaker, say Echo, play WBAI, and you'll get you'll get the shows there. It's still a radical Pacifica channel. It's one of the things that we have left. It's one of the levers of power. And they've been doing a good job uh, recently, bringing, yeah, recently, bringing voices and, and, um, and all that good stuff. So thank you so much, Harriet. I appreciate it. Thank and you. I'm so glad to talk to your good audience and to you, Juliana. You too. You too. Thanks so much. You're watching yeah. ACT TV. We'll be right back.